are casters. Hello and welcome to the pro draft as we head into game one between Espresso Depresso and Team Solo Simp. Joining me on the cast today, uh, I'm first off, I'm Tua for Brum Rush, and joining me on the cast today is my fellow caster, Baby Whopper. How you doing, Baby Whopper? Uh, Baby, I think, am, am I crazy? You might be muted? Or is that just me, guys? I Okay, no, I am there muted. We go. Okay, there we oh, go. Okay, yes. No. <laughs> I'm doing good. How are you? I'm doing great. And also joining us, although he was just on the Red Bull Analyst desk, is I Dum Dum. He's got some insight that we want to hear about uh, as we head into Pro Draft. Dum Dum, we actually got Pro Draft going like pretty quickly here. They're yeah, gunning we're, right we're through flying. it. <laughs> let's 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 get into it right away. We have the bands coming in from Team Solo Simp being Vladimir, Olaf, and Vegar. From Espresso, we have Set, Aphelios, and Silas. And as we look at the first uh, rounds of picks here with oh the Volibear, Vane, and Nautilus answering with Trundle. Holy cow. Trundle, Orange, Dum Dum, right away. What are you thinking as we're looking I, at this, this draft? Like, this is what I mean by Team Solo Sense ability to just throw a draft on its head. Um, I know that Kid Carito loves playing Volibear, and to see Team Solo Simp first pick it away from him, I I didn't even know how Hypoconic played Volibear. So it's like a complete shock. And then you see Wheelie and uh, Virtual Box is going for a traditional bot lane. Uh, of, we're going to answer with a Caitlyn here, just because Caitlyn stomps on Vayne. But I think Vayne is a really good pick into a, a Trundle uh, Orn. But uh, like I said, like that Volibear totally threw me off well it is actually like a really good pick right now i think oh um, I, yeah the, i think they updated it like they gave him a little bit of a buff I, if i can remember correctly they, they so reworked him. He, yeah well no they actually like buffed him i'm pretty sure oh, after okay, that. Yeah. You know, he was pretty weak when he first came out after the rework yeah, like right. in regards to the Volibear, uh, we just had Dinzi, our host that was on not too long ago, said that uh, Rodov, um, uh, one of his players from Votertron in the Premier League, who actually is playing in the scouting ground circuit, uh, is smashing teams apparently with a Volibear, according to Dinsbeg. So if we have the, him being played at that high level of competition, I can only assume that TSS realizes how powerful that champion is right now, and they're, they're trying to abuse it as much as they can. Mm hmm so as we look into the second round of bans here, uh, we got Thresh coming out from TSS, and we have the Yasuo and the yeah. Anivia. It looks like TSS might have missed a ban. I'm not sure what's going on with that. I see Cassiopeia. Okay, then it's on my end, obviously. Okay, so yeah. it's Thresh Cassio, right? Thresh Cassio ban, yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, there we go. It's fixed for me now, actually. Sorry. Okay, uh, uh, oh, wow. so we have the, we're hovering the TK. What do you think about those bans, Dum Dum, and what do you think Espresso's going to try to do here now? So I think we they took away the Anivia because they've they've seen that TSS can play like three tanks, a carry and Anivia, and like Anivia just fits into a tank late game comp with Vayne super well. You just sit back, your Vayne scales, your Anivia sits behind three tanks, and you have a really like, there's the Zac. Like this team is very tanky, and a Vayne Anivia is such a late game comp. I like Victor here a lot too. Uh, both teams have picked a huge front line, lots of team fights. It's going to be a very explosive game um, from both teams. I don't know the last pick here yet, but I'm assuming it's going to be a mid laner. I I got to put like a Malzahar in here maybe. A Malzahar or... Um, I don't know. I, I'm expecting to see a Malzahar here from Expresso Depresso. I would certainly expect that as well. I think that's kind of in uh, Roxor's arsenal. For to... sure, and it it uh it can push against the the Vladimir or the Victor. It keeps him. It can kind of keep him at bay, and it's just such a good team fighting comp. Oh, oh there okay. we go. So it's a rise, which is uh more team fighting for sure. Yeah, it's a very interesting like with Team Solo Simp. I know uh Din um Dum Dum, you know firsthand that we're looking for some really unorthodox kind of like let's mess up the meta and have some fun with it and see if Espresso can handle it. But this looks a little bit more traditional. Obviously, this the is... Bear is kind of that X factor where he's a little bit um you know he's coming in as an OP champ we're gonna call it mm -hmm. uh, and he is like something that you don't traditionally see. But now we're seeing a lot of him and TSS is gonna use that to their advantage. And they're going with like you said that tank front line um we don't we we do see them play tanks but we don't see usually the vein uh, uh, uh you know accompanying I, I it think, that often uh, i the vein is a straight takeaway from rock or mm. not rock source sorry uh, jalapenos jalapenos right. has proven that he is a great vein he plays vein he likes vein and with the three tank comp 
uh, with like a vein trundle, they would get shredded. So I think they definitely, this is the comp TSS wanted to run. They might have wanted the Anivia, but expected it to get Ben away. But I think Victor is a great replacement here. I think TSS definitely got the comp they want, but I also think Expresso has a really, really strong comp. Totally agreed. Uh, Baby Whopper, any final thoughts before we head into a quick a break for competitive integrity? Um, no, I actually really like the picks they have here so far, especially in the mid lane. That's a really good matchup, I think, with Victor and Ryze. They both scale really well. Yeah, I'm looking. I'm excited to see this, how these teams are going to pan out. It's game one of the amateur grand finals for the first season of MEL. A lot is on the line. You know, you take, you want to take home the hardware. You want to get that first place. And we see both teams coming out with these overall strong compositions. They're looking to team fight. They're looking to take this to late. They don't want to make any mistakes necessarily in the early game, you know, trying to be overly aggressive. So we'll see how they pan out. We'll see if how comfortable they get as the series develops. But with that being said, we're going to head to a quick dum uh, dum, you I just had to one think? quick note. I think Never TSS pulled out uh, a very ED style comp, and I think they want to bring it to ED, and I think they want to win or smash game one and say, We can play your style, can you play ours? Mm. That's a very good point, dum dum. I think that TSS is trying to drop the gauntlet on them and see if ED can answer the call. Uh, but before we head into the game, we have to take a, a quick break. Uh, there is a delay, uh, Spectre, Spectre delay, so we need to wait for that. But in the meantime, we're going to take a quick break. Uh, don't worry, we'll be right back uh, for game one of Espresso Diverso versus TSS, our Team Solo Simp, in the grand finals of the MEL for Amateur League. Wait, right now? Yeah. Uh, okay, wait, I just have a quick question first. Do I have to do anything with, like, directing the camera? No, no, just leave it. Okay, okay. Hey, Twitch chat, uh, we're just gonna get the, uh, the spec set up, so, uh, one okay. second, sorry, guys. Okay, so, uh, Renato, um, go back to zero, because Dinzy and you are unsync, sorry. Okay, I'm ready. I don't know if he could hear us anymore, but... Uh, the stream is... Okay, Dinzy, jump to, uh, like, 30 seconds. Okay. Oh, okay, we're doing... Alright, sorry, Twitch. <laughs> we're, we're, we're having some difficulties for this right now, which, uh, we'll, we're gonna fix it right away. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I hate this. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Twitch chat, we got it figured out. Uh, top tier production coming in. Don't worry, don't blame anybody else. It's my fault, 204 Bomb Rush. So if y'all are angry about how it's going, my fault. Don't worry, but we're in it now. We're going to be better for the rest of the way. Uh, welcome back to game one of the grand finals between Team Solo Simp and Espresso Depresso. Dum Dum is no longer, you know, here with us now. He was there for Draft and <laughs> Analyst S, but now it's just Baby Whopper and myself. Uh, we're quickly going to go over the lineups to make sure that you guys are all good. Uh, on the side of Espresso Depresso, we have Bahu, Bahu Tote in the top lane, Kid Carito in the jungle, Roxor is in the mid lane, we have jo Jolopenos in the bot lane as AD Carry, our marksman, and we have Carl DR in the support role. Yeah, and for TSS here, Team Solo Simp, we're going to have Blitzblade in the top lane, we're going to have Hypoconic in the jungle, and we're going to see Revenation in the mid lane. I'm also getting a shout out for playing Victor, my favorite champion. And we have Virtual Boxes as support, and we have Wheelie here in the bot lane. So, uh, Baby Whopper, as we're heading into this, um, actually, I need Renato to show us that scoreboard, because I don't see it up on... Or, Dinzy, uh, show us that scoreboard, please, uh, if you get a chance. Thank you, Dinzy, you're the man. Um, as we're heading, heading into this game, uh, Baby Whopper, we talked a lot about what it means for both these teams. You know, it's a best of five. You know, it's the very first game. And Dum Dum on the analyst desk and in draft brought up the fact that he thinks TSS is actually trying to play a comp uh, composition that ED would, or, you know, play something more meta and not playing their play style. And they're really trying to throw ED off, you know, because ED might've been expecting, oh, they're going to do something unorthodox, but they're playing standard. You know, they got the tanks, um, they got Vayne, you know, going for late game scaling. What do you think that means, like, mentally for ED? Or do you think that they might have been prepared for this? Do you think it's going to throw them off? Or are they just going to play their game regardless? I feel like they're going to play their game regardless. They've, probably, they've been playing a lot of, like, Clash games. And throughout the, throughout the time in the league, they've played against some normal comps as well. So they do have experience. 
Yeah, certainly. I think Espresso Depresso, they, they through the season, they have looked like a really complete and solid team. Um, we've seen a, a few ups and downs. Uh, yeah, uh, Dinzy, there is a way to keep the scoreboard up. Go to the bottom left at that little eye icon. Um, you know where it's, yeah, yeah, right here, there you go. And then scoreboard. Uh, okay, sorry, Twitch. Uh, but yeah, we, I, I do agree with you, Baby Whopper. I think that ED is gonna, you know, still regardless, they might have been expecting something unorthodox, but I think that they do, uh, they are gonna play their game and, you know, hopefully they can show us why they are one of the top teams in the amateur league um, going up against TSS, who ended up in first place. Um, as we're kind of looking at the game, though, uh, we have a little bit of a slow start. Again, we are expecting the scaling, uh, but we do have um, we do have Revivination already jumping out to an early push against Rise. And Rise, you kind of expect that, but you also might have been thinking. Actually, we have a top lane fight going on. Bahuuto and Kid Carido getting the gank off onto Blitzblades, getting the first blood, bringing into the grand finals with a statement. E uh, Espresso Depresso is here, and they're ready to take the win. Uh, mm -hmm. Baby Whopper, what what kind of statement do you think that makes? I think that was really risky for the Volley Bear to be like on a quarter of health and pushing past the river with no vision. I think you're pretty much asking to be ganked, but... Yeah, I, yeah. I, I do agree. I think that um, it was a little bit risky from Blitzblades. Maybe they weren't doing... Uh, a T TSS was not doing as good of a job of tracking where Kid Carito was going to be. Uh, you certainly should have been, you know, keeping that mindset of like, okay, maybe I'm in a position where I can get ganked. I don't have the vision. You know, it was a little bit greedy and he got punished for it. Now, as we look at the rest of the map, we do have um, we do have uh, um, Jalapenos. I hope I'm saying that right. I know that you know there's a huge uh, a huge a huge debate on how to say that, but I hope I'm saying that right. Jalapenos he is trying to get that early advantage over the vein. Traditionally, you do have you know Caitlyn's supposed to be out shoving the vein early on. She is supposed to be the one that's bullying her a bit. So we are going to see if if he's able to keep up that that presence and create some pressure in bot lane for Espresso Depresso. As we look at the rest of the map, though, we do still have Revivination just kind of shoving in Rockstars. They are getting a little bit of an exchange, and we do have Kid Carrero kind of sneaking it behind there, but we have an exchange going up in top lane in the meantime. Just we a little did. bit of a... Oh, here we go, uh, Baby Whopper. Uh, looks like R Rockstar is getting in on the damage. Almost takes him down, but Revivination escapes with just a sliver of HP. We have Hypoconic trying to peel back, trying to get him out there safely. He has to burn his flash. Is Carrero going to be able to catch him? He drops his uh, his uh, his his W. I forget the name of it, unfortunately, for Trundle. Not enough to get him the speed to catch up. We have an, a, a crazy uh, gank going on early, and Revivination just escaping with a sliver of HP. Yeah, Hypoconic reacted quite well, like really fast, and that's just doing what Zach does best, and that's flying in from halfway across the map, so. Yeah, and luckily Hypoconic was there to realize the situation. Again, I think that Kid Carrito has been maybe getting a little bit of a better tempo in terms of the early game jungle for five minutes. He's gotten two ganks off. Again, it is a Zach versus a Trundle, so of course Trundle's gonna have a little bit higher tempo earlier on. Uh, but it was good from Hypoconic to realize that there was going to potentially be that mid, -gank, mid gank, especially with so much pressure that Revivination was uh, producing. We do have another exchange going off in the top lane. Um, it looks like Blitzblaze is trying to get the dominance up here uh, with his Volley Bear. Again, I haven't necessarily seen a lot of Volley Bear uh, since his buffs, um, but I am hearing he is overpowered. So I am excited to see if he's able to transition that. Um, but, you know, of course, with that early death, you know, it looks like Bahu Ocho is the one that's controlling that lane right now. Well, this bottom lane matchup's been quite passive so far, but it is going to be like a, a harder matchup as the game goes on, especially with the vein scaling. Yeah, of course. And we do have another engage coming in for Bahu Oto on the top lane onto Blitzblades. He is going to dive under tower. Not enough to get him. He had to burn his flash and he gets nothing from it. He actually loses more HP than anything. Not necessarily the best call on his case, but I guess he is trying to produce more pressure. We do have Hypoconic coming in for that bot lane gank and Babel Whopper. We did talk a lot, and the desk especially, about how we think this is a bot lane heavy focus game. We think the rest of the map is of top size relatively even, but we think bot lane is where it's going to make the difference. And we do have a gank coming in for Hypoconic. Revenge Nation catching him out with the Victor. Like you said, Baby Whopper, you love to see Victor play and look at him. He puts up a kill already. Well, right now the Volley Bear actually is behind and that's not really, that's not too good for the, the top lane here. Yeah. He, he's been forced back quite often. 
And you would think that I, I, I am hoping to see that we are going to see the scaling coming in from the strength of Volley Bear. You know, I, I have been hearing how strong he has been, but he's not showing it right now. We have Rockstar is actually catching out Revivination, rotating back to the mid lane. He realizes Hypoconics in the area, so he is going to play it a little bit, a little bit safe. Dragon kind of getting some damage in. Rockstar is trying to kite both of them at the same time. He actually is going to pick up the kill on Revivination. He is, he did do the two v one duel, uh, and unfortunately Hypoconic. He didn't, really, he didn't uh, have the opportunity to jump in. I don't know if it was on cooldown, but I'm surprised he didn't get a little more aggressive to try and save Re uh, Revivination there. But Rockstar is getting the heads up play, realizing the rotation, takes him down. Mm -hmm. You hate the face check, you really do, especially when the mid laner's missing, but it happens to the best of us. <laughs> <laughs> and unfortunately for Reviv Revivination, he made that brilliant play bot lane, got that kill with Hypoconic um, on onto Kid Karido in the jungle, but then unfortunately gets punished for it after. We do have uh, Rockstar as though picking up the blue buff in the meantime, and now that he's got his tier, it, he is going to look really scary in the mid lane, and I think he's going to be able to start maybe perhaps pushing back against Revivination. Baby Whopper, what do you think about this mid lane matchup and how it's been going so far since you're, you know, you're a victor lover? It's actually quite even, I'm surprised, but we do see that rises up a level here, and that's not too good for the victor, but it'll be easy for him to catch up. He does wave clear faster than rise once his E gets uh, empowered. I am, I am, I, I am with you that I, I, I think that there is a lot of influence that needs to, uh, that needs to be known uh, between the two, this mid lane matchup, uh, that of what they both can produce, and I think Kid Carido and Hypoconic need to really be paying attention to the, the push and shove that these guys are going to give. They're both roaming champions. They both have great clearing ability, and they both have great late game team fighting. So mm -hmm. you want to make sure that they're keeping in the game. They are getting their farm. And Rockstar is looking for another opportunity to trade. And he chunks down Revivination to a quarter of HP left. Uh, I'm not sure if Revivination is able to stand up to Rockstar anymore now based off of that trade alone. That was nuts how much damage he put out and how quickly it was. Mm -hmm. It is looking like that with this Orin is going to almost double the Volley Bear in CS soon. Yeah, surprisingly, I don't. I I, I am surprised to see that uh, Bahuoto on uh, Orn is picking up so much CS over uh, over uh, Blitzblades right now. I thought that they might perhaps be a little bit more evenly matched, but in this quote-unquote tank matchup, whatever you want to call Volibear nowadays, um, it looks like Bahuoto is kind of controlling the lane. Yes, of course, Kid Karido came and heavily influenced that lane with the gank, but it is Bahuoto who is using that. Um, using that advantage and like he's continuing to use it he's not letting it go so you know great play from Bahuoto let's see if Blitzblades can get himself back into the game uh, as we transition back to the rest of the map you know we, we, we were talking that this is going to be bot lane heavy focus but I haven't seen a lot from either of them they've just been passively farming they're very even right now uh, it doesn't even look like Jalpenios is able to gain like a huge advantage over Wheelie even though Caitlyn does you know traditionally have that uh, advantage in lane against her um, and, it, you know, I think in the long run, this actually might be worse overall for Jolapenos if Wheelie is able to scale for free and not get punished for it. Yeah, exactly. She's, but Caitlyn's not really keeping the vein off of CS here, and you really do need to keep the vein off CS, especially in this team comp with all the tanks. Yeah, and Wheelie, he is going for the Blade of the Rune King first. Uh, and he is going to be able to, you know, come that mid-game spike when they are going to start fighting for dragons. Uh, I think that Wheelie is going to actually be able to contribute as much as Caitlyn. I know that Caitlyn does have the headshot. She has a lot, of, a lot of the range. But if Wheelie is able to get his Blade of the Rune King, we do have the hook coming in under tower. We are going to get uh, virtual boxes. Is going to get end up getting stunned up. But Jalapeno does not want to trade anymore. He got ignited any and uh, with the engage on, he flashes out right away. And it looks like another hook coming on to Jalapeno. He gets punished for it, even though. He he tried escaping. We have another teleport coming in. Uh, Wheelie trying to pick off uh, pick off Carl Dr. In the meantime, not enough HP. We do have a Hypoconic coming in to save the day, and we also have Bahuoto and Kikarito showing up. We have a huge brawl going on. It is continuing back to the tower, but it looks like Wheelie is and uh, sorry, not Wheelie. Uh, yes, he is alive. It looks like he's still alive. I thought he's going to die. There we go. Rockstar picks him up, and we have TSS potentially looks like they are going to come out on top after this whole exchange. A big brawl coming down. Rockstar end up dropping. He is going to get a kill in the meantime, but I'll turn. But it looks like it was a 5v5 brawl, I believe, at the end of the day. Was it, Baby Whopper? I, I, I was losing track of how crazy that was getting. Yeah, I think it was, I think. But they, the support and ADC for ED died quite early on in the fight. However, they're not going to be able to get this dragon off of that team fight win just because they're so low. 
Yeah, it, uh, that at the end of the day, you know, there wasn't a real serious advantage either way. They had so many kills exchanged, uh, both sides. Um, Wheelie, you know, he actually almost picked up uh, that kill onto Carl Dr. the Braum in the last second, but he got out of there. So if you would have gotten that, perhaps that would have been the TSS advantage. Uh, but, uh, you know, in the long run, it actually looks like Jalapenos is picking up these tower plates and the farm now. Perhaps that wasn't necessarily as good as Wheelie wanted that to go, because uh, it looks like Jalapenos is going to be able to pick up the CS to get back and take control of that lane. We do have the exchange coming up from the tank guys up top. Bolivar, Orn, you know, they're doing their thing. They're slapping each other with some grass procs. Actually, it looks like Bahuoto is getting the better of this trade right now. Uh, and I think Blitzplay is just simply just trying to push that lane in so he could back off and go and uh, ward or... Uh, or something like that but you know uh, I, again I am surprised that uh, Bahu Oto is actually controlling this lane as much as he is on the Orn. I thought perhaps Blitz on Volibear might have been something a little bit more scary early on but it's not looking that way at all they do offer. Mm -hmm. Well it looks like we're going to see Zach hovering around the dragon here they might look like they want to take a dragon fight or gank before they can try to get the objective. Yeah, I the the dragon is up. It is going to be a point in contention. I believe that's Mountain. Um, I am watching. Yeah, it is the Mountain Dragon. Okay. Um, yeah, Mountain is going to be a an extremely good dragon for both compositions here. Uh, Bane's going to want that little bit of extra, you know, buffer for her defenses and her HP. Uh, and especially if you are able to, perhaps, you know, it is maybe it'll be lucky enough to end up with the soul after. We'll see. Wow, nice ultimate coming in for Volley Bear to, or from Blitzblades rather, to dodge uh, Bahu Oto's uh, ultimate. I didn't realize that's how it actually worked between the interactions between the two of them, so that's a really good uh, pick up from them. It looks like the Dragon Fight is going to come down now, Baby Whopper. We do have Roxor is picking up the early kill. Revivination is going to drop Kid Guerrero in the meantime. We have them chasing Jolapenos, Wheelie picking up another kill. Not looking good for Jolapenos now that Wheelie's getting, uh, getting, get, getting these early game kills. And Team Solo Simp ends up with the overall advantage and they are going to go for this dragon. Roxor is hanging around thinking maybe he could do something uh, with Carl DR, but I think they realize that it's a little bit mm -hmm. futile and they are going to just back off. Blue, uh, Team Solo Simp picking up the first dragon of the game at 14 minutes in. What do you think about that fight, Baby Whopper? It was actually pretty clean and seeing the Nautilus come out on top of 2-0 and 3 here, he's just going to get tankier and tankier and harder to kill, especially because Caitlyn and the Jalapenos is 0-2 right now in the bot lane. And like I said, I was, you know, uh, in regards to Espresso Depresso, you know, looking at the Bane, not punishing her enough as he should have, or punishing Wheelie uh, early on. Um, it, he is being able to be a, that that threat already as Vayne, you know, 14 minutes in, 14 minutes in with his Blade of the Rune King. I think that is a little bit of a hiccup coming from Espresso Depresso in terms of their strategy, uh, allowing Vayne to, you know, get this early game advantage. You know, when you see Vayne with the tanks, that should be your number one focus. And I don't know if Kid Carrero spent enough time trying to punish uh, Wheelie and Wheelie and Virtual Boxes rather, because, you know, they are a collective effort. I shouldn't be uh, ignoring Virtual Boxes effort as well. He's been playing great too. Um, but as the game's transitioning now to our mid game, the gold is still even, you know, it's not really broken open just yet. But if for some reason to me, I feel like Team Solo Simp has a, has that advantage right now just because of the vein in this type of composition. Mm -hmm. Well, I actually, I'm actually surprised to see the Trundle in top lane as much as he is like with Orin literally just owning his lane. He should be camping bot lane here and hopefully helping his Caitlyn get a lead get on this thing. We do get another engage going out here though, Baby Whopper. It looks like Wheelie picking up yet another kill. Virtual boxes. I don't know if he's 100% on his hooks today, but it sure feels like it. Double kill coming in for Wheelie. Virtual boxes setting up these beautiful plays. Jalapenos and Carl DR getting a little bit too aggressive in the bot lane and virtual boxes punishing them for it heavily. And you know, now we look at Wheelie, he's 4-1 and 2 with a bounty. Uh, you know, he has, I think, at least a thousand to two thousand gold that he's gonna go back after this and pick up another big item. It's not looking good coming in from Espresso Depresso, knowing you have to deal with this uh, with Wheelie on this vein now. Of course, they have some tools. They do have Rise's Burst uh, to, you know, help with the tank front line. And we do have uh, Bahuoto looking to, you know, help get to the back line on that Vayne. But I don't know if they have any real serious answers to dealing with Vayne as she's starting to scale now. And it, uh, to me, I don't think it's looking good for Espresso Depresso unless they start shutting down Wheelie, uh, you know, ASAP. Mm -hmm. As we go into this, we have another gank coming in. Hypoconic baiting in Roxors for the kill. Team Solo Sim picking up yet another one. We do have another mid uh, mid mid lane fight going on. Kid Carrito getting chased down by Blitzblades. Blitzblades flashing in, trying to get him. 
not enough uh, to burst him down just yet. You know, he's a little bit too far behind in his, his damage scaling. Jalapenos is going to punish him as a result for going for that play. He is getting back to the game. Bahuoto takes down Revivination. And, you know, as I say that, I think Te Team Solo Simp is in the lead. They had that good initiation. And Espresso Depresso says, nah, not yet. We're still in this game. Mm -hmm. That's actually a really good fight for ED here because it allows them to hopefully get this mid lane turret close to being down. Hypoconics jumping back in here, Baby Whopper. He is going to try to pick it up. There is a teleport coming in from from Roxors. Roxors is going to get the root down onto virtual boxes. He is a little bit too tanky. Got a little bit too far ahead in that bot lane. Uh, Jalapeno is trying to land some damage down, get the stun, maybe be able to finish him off if headshot was next. Uh, but unfortunately, not quite enough. Uh, the teleport perhaps being wasted, you know, by Roxors. I know they get that pressure. They push out. Uh, they push out a reviv revivination as a result from the mid lane. So. Hypoconic actually is going to jump in yet again. That's four times I've seen him do this in the last like a minute and a half. <laughs> He's going to get the kill. Wheelie's going to get another one. Is this Wheelie again with a, with a double triple kill? I don't know. Roxors drops down to Revivination. We have Wheelie on the side. No one's able to stop him. Revivination's now in the game himself. He's got a couple kills. Uh, TSS and Hypoconic, I think so far, has been the huge difference maker in this game for me, Baby Whopper. He's get, just getting these plays over and over and over. He's jumping in. I think Espresso Depresso needs to seriously invest in a ward over that wall right now. It's happened four, three or four times in the mid lane that they've been punished by that. Yeah, well, we were talking on the desk with Dum Dum and we talked about how Hypoconic would be a big difference maker for TSS here because he's just all around a better jungler and he's been like a top tier jungler in this league. And I, I think Hypoconic is really showing it off right now. Uh, you know, no, th that is not to take away from Kid Carrillo at all. He's been playing well this whole season too. But I think Hypoconic is just showing he has that edge, that understanding uh, a little bit over the game. I was giving props to Kid Carrillo early on. You know, he was getting a little bit more aggressive. He's the one, you know, setting up plays early on. But, you know, Hypoconic, he understands the matchup. He understands that's what that's what the Trundle is trying to do. That's what Kid, Car Kid Carrito is going to do. So he tells his team, relax, back up a bit. Let me scale and I'll take over. And that's exactly what he's doing. You know, the only weak point right now is Blitzblades on the Volibear. Um, other than that, TSS is across the board uh, playing a lot strong, has a lot stronger, um, uh, is a lot stronger on the rest of the map. So uh, maybe Espresso Depresso is going to start thinking about how they can, you know, further punish Blitzblades because they obviously cannot deal with uh, Wheelie and no longer Revivination Nation anymore. Yeah, well, I might argue that it's actually like a tactical feed by the Volley Bear because the four people <laughs> that are that are like dominating on his team are all scaling champions. So, you know what? It's a tactical <laughs> feed. It's calculated. <laughs> Perhaps that's what it is, Baby yeah. Whopper. Perhaps uh, Team Solo Simp realized, you know, what we're going to do is that you guys want to focus our Volley Bear? He's <laughs> overpowered. He's going to be relevant no matter what. Like, if he goes 0 and 10. He's still going to be able to do something because of the skill set and the, because of how strong he is in the meta right now. Uh, so perhaps you're right, Baby Whopper. That might be a legitimate strategy. Looks like TSS in the meantime is looking to position around Baron, develop their vision, and perhaps they're looking for an early closeout into this game. We do have an initiate coming in from Bahuoto. Gets his ultimate down. Wheelie dropping down to a sliver of HP. He is uh, Bahuoto is looking to pick him off. He gets the shutdown in the top lane. We do have the fight to keep uh, going down as we get into the mid lane uh, area. Bahuoto picking up the kill on virtual boxes now. Revivination is able to pull back the fight a little bit. But it looks like Espresso Depresso is pulling away with this fight and catches out Team Solo Simp as they're trying to clear vision. Mm -hmm. Off of that fight and the shutdown of gold, it looks like the gold difference is not going to be very much anymore. I, I'm i I'm a little bit surprised by that play. I thought that, you know, perhaps TSS was making the correct call. Let's set up for Baron. Let's get that vision. Let's clear it out. But I think Victor TP'd in too, too late, to be honest. He kind of TP'd in by the, by the red buff there. Yeah, perhaps it was a little bit of a miscommunication, Baby Whopper. You know, maybe they weren't as coordinated as they needed to be. And when you are going up, against, you know, in the finals of the amateur grand finals uh, for the first season MEL, you got to respect your opponent. You know, it, uh, of course you're ahead right now and, you know, maybe TSS is letting it get to their head a bit, uh, but you have to respect that Espresso Depresso is not going to let you do whatever you want. They are going to, you know, fight and be back in this game. And TSS just roamed into their jungle nonchalant 
thinking they could clear vision for free and they get heavily punished for it especially with the fact that uh Bahuoto, you know he's he actually picked off wheelie took out a huge chunk of that damage early on um with his ultimate really heads up play by Bahuoto. you know i think tss just forgot that you know Bahuoto was scaling really hard in that top lane because of how far behind blitzblades has been getting yeah, like he has his uh, upgraded items and, you know, it'll be not too long until he starts upgrading his teammates items as well. Yeah, and I, I again, I was feeling that TSS was going to take, or Solo Simp was going to take uh, control of this game. And you know, they are making these mistakes now, though, you know, uh, the way that the game was flowing, the way it was feeling, I thought, you know, okay, T Team Solo Simp, they're going to set up for bearing. No, it's, uh, Espresso's not going to be able to do anything. But Espresso Depresso, you know, they're waiting for the moment to strike. Yes, they're behind. They do, but they do know they have the scale and rise. They're not afraid to, you know, keep, you know, uh, trying to square up with TSS. You know, make force them to make the correct play. And you know, they realize TSS was out of position. They punish them for it. Let's see if Espresso is going to do that again. We do have the, them even in gold, so perhaps TSS is going to back off and you know play a little bit more cautious now. You know, any mistake from here on out is going to be fatal to either side. Mm -hmm. Well, it looks like they are setting up to possibly team fight again because they're five and five. Yes, I, I think that, that 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 is going to be their focus. You know, they don't have a real split pusher on other side. Uh, again, if Blitzblades was, wasn't so far behind, maybe he could have been that split push threat in the Volley Bear. Um, you know, depending on how he was building, you know, he does have that sheen, so he could, you know, proc that on the towers and quickly uh, knock it down. But, um, you know, they are looking to probably 5v5 now. I think the actual only real split push threat is from the mid lane on both sides. Uh, they do both have teleport, except that Rockstars is in the position where he has it available and Revivination does not. So I'm going to see if Rockstars is going to try to pull away the rest of the map, split it, uh, which he is doing right now, and force uh, Team Solo Simp to either engage on Baron and start the fight, or, you know, try and do something to stop Rockstars from splitting for free. Uh, currently, that's not the case, because actually, it is uh, it is TSS starting this Baron. Looks like they are going to try to get the fight in. We do have the teleport coming in. The, the fight is going to engage. We have uh, Virtual Box is getting knocked up. We have uh, we have it in the back line. The fight's going to continue back. It looks like uh, Kid Carino is going to escape with a sliver of HP. Blitzbakes picks up the kill, so I lied on that. And we have Jalapeno trying to pump out as much damage as he can in the back line. Looks like a double kill for Revivination. For Perhaps a triple. Rockstar is trying to get some damage up, but not enough. Triple kill coming in for Revivination. As soon as I said that I need to see TSS, you know, making a move here, trying to stop uh, Rockstar from, you know, that split, uh, they go for the Baron and force the fight. And Espresso Depresso was just disoriented. They didn't know how to react to it. And TSS picks them apart. Yeah, I don't think he, he was expecting for them to start with Baron. That was actually really aggressive play, in my opinion. It was. But it, it yeah. paid off for them, though. <laughs> No, certainly, Baby Whopper. I was, uh, you know, uh, as I was watching, I'm like, okay, you know, maybe they're gonna like, you know, maybe they're gonna try and deal with uh, deal with rock swords, or maybe they're just gonna position around the Baron and force ED to make a mistake, you know. But they decide to just go for it. Uh, I guess they realized that they did have the vein, and as long as Wheelie was staying alive, uh, they, like uh, Espresso Depresso was doing everything they could to get to Wheelie, and they couldn't. And in the meantime, uh, because Revivin Revivination is so strong. Uh, he was just picking off the rest of the team by himself. They don't have an answer for both of them. Rise teleported in perhaps a, a few seconds too late, so he wasn't able to pump out as much damage as he needed to. Uh, and t team, Solo Simp, team Solo Simp with the heads up play, realizing they had the opportunity to punish Espresso for their positioning, and they did it beautifully. And now look at them. They got Baron. They're looking to push this mid lane down. Um, Dragon is up, so they can pick up the third one if they so choose. But, you know, with their strength right now, I think they could, you know, get a heavy push into the mid lane if they want. Mm -hmm. I think they, well, it looks like they are going to actually rotate to the dragon here. I would have, I would have thought they would have pushed the lane down mid a little bit more and then headed to the dragon, but. Yeah, it looks like that, it looks like dragon is going to be uh, taken here by Team Solo Simp. And although, again, I feel like Team Solo Simp is in the driver's seat and they have a huge advantage this game. It's only a 4k, uh, 4,000 gold difference uh, for Espresso Depresso. So not not that far behind. You do have a scaling rise. He he is has a full row of stacked. He's got a service embrace. He is building to those really heavy late game items where he will be a monster eventually. He just needs a little bit more time. So it's up to Espresso Depresso to play this game smart. Let that let Rockstars do what he does. Let him carry for Espresso Depresso. Let him do his job. 
It's just Espresso Depresso is going to have to think about how can we stop the bleeding? You know, Wheelie's getting crazy far ahead. Revivination's getting crazy far ahead. They need to think about how to play this intelligently and not let those guys start a fight the way they want to. So I am going to be interested to see how Espresso Depresso deals with this. They're not out of the game, but they have to play really smart from here on out. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the victor's scaling really well, like, especially because he's 8-3 and three and he has 10 stacks on his mages. Mm -hmm. So Ryze does have to be careful of that as well. That is very scary how much damage Reviv Revivination is going to be able to pull out on the Victor. And, you know, Baby Whopper, you said you love seeing Victor being played. He's he's your go-to guy, you know, the, the one champ he's, that you... He's not picked very much. Like, I'm, like, I don't think he was until Yasuo started playing him on stream a little bit more, but mm -hmm. he's a sleeper yep. pick. Victor has been in and out of the meta, but he's always been like, you could play him, but he just might not be like, you know, the, the number one pick that you can always take. Uh, but, you know, I love seeing Victor. I think he has a great skill set and Revivination is showing it off that this is what he can do on Victor. Um, I know that we actually were speaking to Dum Dum and he said Revivination is a little bit more of a engage, you know, perhaps assassin type of player. Um, he does have his, you know, uh, his Anivia, which, you know, uh, Espresso did, uh, did ban uh, as a result. But, you know, seeing him on Victor is a little bit unorthodox compared to, you know, what we usually see him on. So to see him playing this pick, oh, he, well, he's going to burst down the Rock Swords really, really quickly, almost able to pick him off with uh, one full combo, almost had his full HP bar. Yeah, that's literally yeah, took him for half of his health. Revivination is becoming a monster right now, Baby Whopper. Uh, what do they do to deal with him? Is there anything they can do from Espresso Depresso at this point? I think that, you know what, don't send your Rise after him trying to match him in a 1v1 lane. That's probably the first thing you don't want to do, especially when he, with his Q and his E could just take you for like three quarters of your health. And Revivination, I think, is challenging them like, you know, let's see what you got. Come on, I'm going to keep slip pushing. Let's go, Kid Carito. I want to duel you. Let's see what you got. We have Kayla oh. coming in with ultimate. We do have the tell or the ultimate coming in from Rise using that beautifully. Uh, Rock Swords understanding the situation. He like Espresso Depresso, they realized they needed to deal with him. And uh, Revivination, you know, but we do have the whole bear slip pushing in the top lane as well. They 1 3 1 this. And uh, it looks like he's going to be backing off a little bit. You know, TSS trying to pull that back. I think in theory, the way that they were approaching the, the strategy was smart. You know, let's send uh, Victor bot. Let's have them. They, they had three people show up for Victor. If Revivination was just a, a tad more heads up in that play and realizing what they're trying to do, he should have backed off a, a little bit sooner. And then uh, and then Blitzblades would have had that tower for free. But as a result, you know, uh, Revivination stepped up a little bit too far. He got a little bit too aggressive, not fully understanding the situation. And, you know, it looks like they get punished for it. And really good play from Espresso Depresso to take him down. They needed to do something about uh, Revivination right there. So that's that's a good, uh, good play for them from them. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely a greedy play, but uh, ED here was able to shut him down and get that gold. <laughs> and it looks like uh, it looks like we are going to be probably positioning for another Baron play here. I'm not sure if Espresso is in the position to actually set a vision and contest it, but you know they need to do something about this Baron because if 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 T Team Solo Simp is able to pick up Baron and the the final Dragon or the Elder or the uh, the Soul. Um, you know, that's probably going to be all she wrote uh, for, for Espresso Depresso. Um, I'm not saying that's 100%, but to have both those buffs, you know, simultaneously, uh, I think that Espresso is realizing the severity of that and they need to do something about it. So we'll see how they're going to be, be able to position between these two big objectives now. Team Solo Simp already getting ahead of the play, and maybe they're just going to start it right here since, uh, since Espresso Depresso is out of position. Mm -hmm. We still see the rise on the red buff, so he's nowhere near. <laughs> The blue buff, yeah. Uh, yeah, um, blue buff. yeah, so it looks like Espresso is going to try to develop some vision, clear it out a bit. TSS opting not to go for it, and instead they are uh, they are going to try and transition over the dragon instead. And you know they feel this might be a little bit of an easier objective to control. And you know let's get the let's get the soul uh, instead of you know fighting for Baron. Espresso is realizing the play. Are they going to get here in time? Not quite. Not quite there.